Criticism is as inevitable as breathing, said T.S. Eliot. With this view in mind, I am going to discuss the views of John Dryden on the three unities. The three uni dramatic unities are the unity of time, unity of place and unity of action. The unities make the drama credible and convincing. Now coming to Dryden's views. Dryden, as put by Dr. Johnson, was the father of English criticism. An essay on dramatic poesy is his famous and formal work. The essay is a discussion among four persons and they are Critus, Eugenus, Decidius and Neander. Neander is Dryden himself, Sir Robert Howard, Charles Sackville and Sir Charles Sidley are the other three speakers. In fact, they are Dryden's best friends. The dramatic unities or the three unities are associated with Aristotle, the great literary critic of ancient Greece. Unity of time limits the period of action to be presented in the drama to 24 hours or one day. There should be a presentation of one whole day on the stage. The events that have taken place should be limited to this. The other events that occur in the entire drama should be reported by the speaker. Next is the unity of place. All the actions or the events that occur in the drama should be confined to one place. For example, we have Ben Johnson's Volpone. All the major actions of this play take place in Venice and there is no change of location. Thirdly, there is the unity of action. This indicates that at one complete plot, the plot should dominate the entire drama. There should be no subordinate event or events. Oedipus Rex by Sophocles is a perfect example of the unity of action. The concept of the three unities has been well discussed by the neoclassists of the 17th century. They do not totally agree that the three unities have been taken from Aristotle's poetics. According to them, Aristotle has mentioned only two unities, the unity of time and the unity of action and that Aristotle is only serious about the unity of action and makes a passing reference to time. Dryden does not state that all the three unities are essential for a drama. He defends the Renaissance dramatists for their violation of the three unities. He is liberal in his critical disposition. He is of the view that the unity of action is not spoiled by introducing a large number of characters and events. In fact, it gives the play a variety and copiousness. It saves the drama from being narrow and cramping like the French plays. But he also wants the playwright to have a proper interconnection between the actions. One cannot evaluate Shakespeare's plays in this light. It has abundance. It does not prevent the play to be less popular or less attractive. In fact, Shakespeare's plays are very lively. lively. They have a number of characters, they have number of incidents and all these are properly arranged and essential part of any of his drama. You can analyze any of his work and see and you will find that there is a liveliness and there is a connectivity which the audience enjoys. In discussing further, Critus and Lycidius praise the French dramatists for observing the three unities. Giving support to their views, they reason out that when the unity of time is maintained, the time of the dramatic action is proportionate to the time of the actual event. The proportion should be observed 
in different acts. The unity of action is maintained with one complete action that is presented on the stage. About the unity of place, it is discussed that one stage cannot represent different places by only changing painted scenes. Continuing the argument further, Eugenius and Neander present their arguments in favour of the English dramatists who have kept away from observing the three unities. The plot of the English drama have a greater variety of human experience and action than the plays of the ancient times. Neander expresses Dryden's own personal views. According to him, the English plays are superior to the French plays because the English plays do not observe the three unities strictly. The English plays are more lively and encompass a variety of themes. Dryden has a liberal attitude towards the three unities. He differs from Philip Sidney, the poet and the an Elizabethan critic. Sidney is very rigid and condemns those English dramatists who violate the three unities. Dryden, on the other hand, openly and broad-mindedly debates the issue. He stands distinguished from the orthodox ideas of Ben Jonson and Alexander Pope. Dryden's classicism may be called liberal classicism. His aesthetic vision is not clouded by critical observation and he claims it's a very um, famous claim that he admires ben johnson but loves shakespeare thank you